You're listening to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Welcome to MPS Connections. I'm joined today by Matt Wenzel from Midland High School. He's an assistant principal. Keith Seibert, he's also an assistant principal, but he's at Northeast Middle School. Lieutenant Mahabir from the Midland Police Department. And Chief Ford, also from the Midland Police Department. Department. Thank you, everybody, for being on again. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're doing this one all together because it's it's a team. Uh, today we're talking about school safety. And, um, uh, oh, I also want to thank Abby for, for doing all of our technical stuff. She does a ton of, she does the editing, all the audio and video stuff. So um, thanks, Abby, for, for being my partner and doing such a great job. Let's get right into it. As a community, schools and police together, what have we done well? Keith and, and Matt, why don't we start with you guys? I, I would just say the open communication between, between the Midland City Police and the schools as far as interacting over school safety and procedures and having the SROs in the building has made a huge difference. Okay. Matt, feel free to yeah, put, point the mic yeah. right towards you. Yeah. I, I would just add on to that the, um, the importance of the SROs in, a, in the buildings and in their impact that they truly have. A lot of times it's not seen. Um, the relationships that they build with the students um, and a lot of things um, that they do prevent um, from becoming a bigger issue in the schools. Excellent. Chief Ford and Lieutenant Mahabir, you guys deal with this every single day. Can you tell us anything, any major changes or anything that's, uh, that's significant, that, that has significantly changed since, uh, since last year? Um, one of the larger changes that we've made um, at the end of last school year, we were able to do an individual assessment for each building with the helps of our uh, SROs and our CROs, um, which allowed them to go to each individual site and see where some safety weaknesses were, some of the things we were doing really well. Um, so I think that set us into a really good spot when we start looking at new things, you know, like additional cameras and, and whatnot. We have a better idea of some of the spots we were missing. Um, so I say that was definitely one of our, our big steps last year. Was doing the assessments? Yes. Okay. Did you guys ever, had you done the assessments before? No, no. not to my knowledge. It's never been done previously. First time. Okay. What, was that something that they were doing in other districts or was that just something that, that came to you? Like maybe we should start like assessing ourselves. Um, so I think it, the conversation initially started as a result of a grant that was going around. Um, that allowed for that to be done because it's generally fairly costly and uh, labor and time intensive. So with the opportunity with that grant, the conversation started and we had the ability to actually um, accommodate it. Okay. And with that, the SROs have, a, like, like um, Matthew uh, mentioned about relationships, they already knew the buildings themselves. So what a better person than an expert that knows the building as a police officer and as an SRO to take time to do that threat assessment. That's awesome. So the SROs themselves, they did the assessments. Absolutely. They did. That's awesome. That's very cool. So what kind of things have changed since last year then? Well, what we have done um, and we're implementing this year is something called a threat assessment team. And so uh, that is made up of uh, a variety of individuals with different skill sets. The SROs are a part of that team as well as an assistant principal, a social worker, uh, may have a counselor, um, some other individuals. And when we do uh, receive certain threats uh, in the school, um, that team is, is joined in an office and we were able to go through in a very strategic manner um, that threat and then get that addressed uh, ASAP. Um, we began that at the end of last year uh, and we're trained by the Michigan State Police um, with that, and, and we're just beginning to implement that uh, at the beginning of this school year. Can we talk a little bit more about that? What, what is the threat assessment team? So the threat assessment team is, um, I, I guess we could give a scenario. We, um, we receive some social media threats, uh, possibly at night. A text message would go out to the threat assessment team. They would all um, join in my office. We would take a look at that information. Um, each person on the team is given a specific job. It may be to interview the student, interview teachers, 
um, interview friends, interview parents. Um, it possibly could be uh, go to the home and, and do an assessment there um, by the officer. Um, so there's a variety of different avenues to go down. Um, it just gives us more flexibility and we're able to be more proactive um, when we when we get these types of threats in our schools, um, just to be more quick, uh, to be, to be, to get it addressed quicker. Yeah. So we talked about it last year. We, we talked a lot about social media last year and the, the impact that has on the school climate and, um, dangers in school. You, and you're directly addressing that with the threat assessment team, right? Um, does the does the threat assessment team address anything else, or what else do you guys kind of team up on or work on that might not involve social media? We'll get to social media in a second. But. Well, it would also include uh, direct threats that are made during the school day that aren't related to social media. So okay. it would uh, include that, and it just really gives an opportunity for your mental health workers in the building, as well as the administration, the people that Matt had listed to together and get different viewpoints about what had happened, but also the follow-up that would take place when the student returns. Gotcha. Okay. It's a really proactive approach, and um, there's still not a lot of districts in the state of Michigan doing it, so the fact that MPS is doing it is something that we as a community should be really, really proud of. Um, it allows for a complete 360 look at that particular incident because one thing that we have definitely learned and we've gotten better at is we can't take a broad brush approach to every single threat because everyone is very different. You have very different dynamics, um, different factors all the way around. So this allows for an individual look at that situation so that we are handling that particular situation the best we can. Let's talk about social media for a little bit. We, we delved into it quite a bit last year, probably a little bit more than I, than I thought we would, but things have changed, uh, and it's always changing. So how are we doing as far as keeping up with the rapid rate of, of technology and how much it changes? I mean, now we've got, you've got threads and X and everything else. That, you know, It's kind of the same. They're the same beasts, but they're just changing names. I, I feel like no matter how good of a job we do as a police department or as a school system, we are always behind what the newest thing is. The kids always know way before we do, so it's just a matter of us trying to constantly educate ourselves to keep up on it. Um, our SROs are big fans of, of helping us with that because they're exposed to it way more than any of us are. I mean, for those of us that have you know a little bit older kids, it works in our favor. They keep me halfway technology savvy, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're always behind. I don't know how that we we ever fully get ahead of them on the newest, latest, greatest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're more reactive than proactive with it, but we we try to keep up as best we can, that's for sure. Well, that's fair, and as community members, I don't think anybody expects you guys to, to be to be able to tell the future <laughs> and, <laughs> and know what's, what's gonna go on or what's gonna happen. You, and you don't know what, what kids are going to gravitate towards Absolutely. or not gravitate towards. Um, last year at the beginning of the year, was it was TikTok and TikTok trends, and we talked about that quite a bit. Now it's we've, we, don't even, we don't even have it on campus. It's kind of outlawed on campus, TikTok is. So it's, well, it's, we, you know, technology speaking, it, it's, we just don't have it. It's, it's, it can't come through our, our system, so... I didn't word that at well at all, but <laughs> you kind of know what I'm talking about. So, um, is there anything that we're we're trying to like keep our, our finger on the pulse of uh, that might have happened over the summer, um, technology wise or social media wise that you guys can think of? Like, okay, we've got to keep an eye out on that come the fall. We haven't heard of any really. new latest viral trends those are always what keeps us running as a police department and as a school system um you know what's what's the next brightest thing that our our kids are challenging themselves with so um <laughs> fortunately we did not have any of that arise over the summer so we're just going to knock on wood and see if we can ride that way for a little bit fair enough let's talk about the history of sros 
we have them in our secondary schools. Um, what kind of influence do they have on, on the students, Chief, or Lieutenant Mahavir? I'll take that. So the history of the SROs, I'll, I'll go with that as a question first. So it started back in 2010 with just two SROs, and then eventually we moved to the four where we're at now. We're two in the middle school level. As far as influence goes, oh, I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to spend, I think, six to seven years in the schools. So those old relationships, you know, that's where it all starts and that's where it all begins. Uh, for the most part, those relationships still continue. I think, you know, that's the foundation of all of it is the relationships and the influence. You can only imagine. I mean, I know these guys themselves, they see it every day where they have so much influence over the student body and, and who they're talking to. What a great place for a law enforcement officer to be in, um, sharing that information and vice versa, information sharing with them as well. Because I know these two see it every day, that they're on the forefront of it, where there are those kids that are maybe just trying to figure life out in itself. Not bad kids, not, not, not making poor choices, but just not sure. And to have that resource there, it's just huge. So the influence, I mean, you guys probably can, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, for the most part. So it, in my opinion, it, it kind of goes um, hand in hand with some of the social media stuff. Um, so we are always trying to to break the mold of what traditional school seems to uh, or, or is perceived by the student. Um, we preach to our students that this is their school. Um, if you see something, say something. If you uh, if you you need somebody in the building. Um, to be your person, some type of adult. Um, and, and a lot of our students choose the SRO, which is great to see. Um, you know, our incoming ninth graders look at the SRO as a police officer like they would in the streets. Um, within a few months, uh, you know, they're chatting at lunch, they're, they're hanging out in his office, or they're seeing him at a, a, some type of athletic event or, or band event or, or something like that. It is, it is really neat to see the relationship between um, the students in the SRO and how it changes or evolves over their, their high school experience. But it is a critical factor um, in, in changing how we do high school, how we do high school with our students. I also think that it's important to mention that the, the relationships that are built within the school with the SRO carries over into the community for the remainder of the police department and officers that are, you know, not directly part of the schools, but see the students on the weekends or in the evenings, and it builds that bridge between, um, you know, the city police and the schools outside of the school building. Uh, I think that having the SROs in the building is just simply their presence there is a comfort for the students. It's a comfort for the parents. It's a another source of stability within the building. Um, it does foster those relationships, but I've told our new student resource officer, uh, Morgan Sundberg, I said, just having you in the cafeteria at lunch is not even necessarily saying anything, but just being visible is, is huge. It brings stability. There's an extra, um, an extra layer of uh, somebody watching the students and keeping an eye on what's going on, and so it's been very helpful. Keith, I know you mentioned the uh, relationships with the students in the community. Do you feel like it, sorry, AJ, I don't no, mean to take ahead. any of the questions You're from fine. you, but I also noticed when I was an SRO, and still to this day, the relationships with the teachers and staff. Would you guys, yep. Do you think that puts them more at ease? Do you think? 100%. Yep. Cool. Should have mentioned that. Well, and I think it's, you know, Midland does a really good job. When you look at how things were being handled nationally, not all districts have this cooperation, and the fact that we do, um, you know, you'll see some districts where the teachers don't even want SROs in the building, and that is not at all the case here. They are always very welcomed. Our department's always very welcomed. Um, we're always very excited to hear from the teachers and the admin staff just because uh, that partnership is imperative for all of us to do our job well in, in today's day and age. So we are so very fortunate here in the city of Midland. Truly. A lot of our trainings take place in the schools as well. They open their doors for us where our officers are familiar with the buildings themselves. So that's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Chief Ford, last time you mentioned uh, how looking at other active assailant situations around the country, you were, were kind of 
you guys were able to kind of glean how we could do things differently, which is just something you were you were about to touch on. So can we, can we talk about that a little bit, like discuss maybe some of those situations? Um, I mean, uh, without picking on other districts or yeah. picking on other other situations. I'm going to put I a bounty we, on my head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that what we did is we did, um, we spent a lot of time last year. It was definitely our prevailing issue, uh, looking at what other districts were doing, um, what we were doing nationally to respond to active assailants, and what can we do better. So um, some of the things that we've now implemented are uh, the usage of drones, uh, both for internal, the building, and then also externally. Um, we have... Uh, um, I know this word, an RTF. Yep. Rescue Task Force. Thank yep. you. Um, where uh, it's a very proactive approach. Uh, previous years, we would have responded, uh, fire department would have basically staged until we could deem that area safe. Um, obviously, in incidents where seconds are absolutely imperative, um, to get medical help in quickly makes a huge difference. So uh, we instituted that last year with the help of my Michigan and our fire departments and um, both county and city. And um, so that's a huge, huge, that's a huge. One of the first in the state of Michigan. Yeah, it's a huge step forward that we um, were so very fortunate to have here. So I don't know that we've changed a whole lot. I think we just finally took a really good look and then went through it step by step because it is absolutely our worst day incident. Uh, it's one that keeps me up at night. And the fact that there are so many steps to it to make sure that we can do it the best we can um, is is all we can do to, to mitigate it. So You can never be too prepared. I mean, that's, that's good. That's, it's not nice to hear that it keeps you up at night, <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to hear that you guys, it's always on your mind. You're always thinking about it and and that you're you're cultivating relationships between the schools and between the hospitals and between other like just all facets of the community. So yeah, I mean that's one of the great things about this area are the resources, and uh, we've worked really hard as a department to make sure that we are building relationships within the community instead of just being this subset of the community. We want to make sure that we are active members. So we've worked really hard to, um, we do monthly meetings with the schools now, uh, not only MPS, but also with Northwood, which we had never done. You know, stuff like that makes a huge difference on those worst days because it's not the first time I've ever spoken to Matt at that point. Right. You know, so it, it makes a, a big difference in the long run. Absolutely. I want to talk about this a little bit because we talked about it before recording, but zero wise. And I've just heard the term thrown around a little bit. I did a little bit of my homework just because I, I wanted to just know what it was out of curiosity. Can And we're talking about possibly bringing it in to our buildings, in particular possibly our elementary schools. Uh, can someone discuss what it is? Do you want to start that, Matt? Yeah, sure. So Zero Eyes is uh, um, some technology that Midland Public Schools will be getting in the very near future. Um, it's based on the exterior cameras of the building, and um, that application would be facilitated through a third party who would, um, for lack of better terms, be able to identify a threat uh, before it was near the building. Now, what the approximate distance from the building is, I'm not sure, um, but uh, they would be able to put the building in lockdown before that person or persons entered uh, the building. So kind of using AI to be able to determine whether the, an active assailant is approaching a campus or they, like they have a, a gun or a weapon or something, right, Chief Ford? Yeah, it actually, uh, AI is, is absolutely the correct term. It teaches itself um, to identify not only a fully put together weapon, but pieces of such. So one of the examples that they showed us um, during the vendor presentation was um, an assailant is in a stairwell that happens to be monitored and he's assembling a firearm. And uh, it is monitored by people that have uh, either military or law enforcement experience. 
uh, and it is notified very quickly, at which point then they start pushing notifications out to the school and also the police department simultaneously. So it definitely gives us more seconds, which is what we're always striving for because those seconds mean the difference between life and death in those scenarios. So, Which is crucial, yeah, absolutely. Is that something that, that Mr. Jasper is talking about doing uh, at just the elementaries or at all buildings? So my understanding is that they're going to begin in the elementaries and then work their way okay. uh, through the system. Okay. You know, just a, another typical, um, a fortunate typical uh, response from Midland Public Schools and the Midland Police Department. We have many layers of protection that people don't realize or, or are aware of or cannot see. Um, you know, we have uh, all of the staff members have wrapped around their phone which is a, uh, an alert system that allows us to lock the building down. All of our phones are capable of having access to the intercom now. Um, we have multiple cameras throughout our building. We have SROs in our building. We have uh, 3D mapping devices that are, are accessed by uh, emergency personnel. We have um, drills that are, are performed um, each year. Uh, there are many different layers to uh, to safety in, in the middle public schools. Excellent. That's good to hear. It's very, it's a, I think it gives everybody, listeners, a peace of mind about the, the nature or the climate of our school safety in our, in our buildings. So, I think um, one is we are so very fortunate here in Midland because we do have so many varied layers. Um, the constant talk nationally is how do we, you know, strengthen our school buildings and not have it feel and look like a prison. And so I think school districts and police departments and probably now architects are trying to balance that constantly, you know, because you can have a really great building, but it's a tactical nightmare depending on how it's set up. So um, the fact now that, you know, police departments and architects are having conversations about new schools that's a really good thing. Um, and the fact that we have so many different options here and so many layers really sets us apart from many districts in the state because, unfortunately, the reality is we can never absolutely eliminate this as a possibility because, you know, criminals are always looking for the latest and greatest also. So um, the best we can do is put as many layers of safety that we can, and I applaud Midland Schools for doing that because... Um, it just makes all of us safer. And I, I think it makes our parents feel better and our kids feel better. And um, what more could we ask for from a district? Absolutely agreed. Uh, the Chief Ford, anything else you'd like to add? Or I, lieutenant, lieutenant? I would just like to say the fact that um, I very much appreciate and I am so very proud of the work that um, MPS and MPD does now with um, when we do have an active threat the fact that we all get together, work as a team, and deploy that message simultaneously and reflective of each other's message, um, that alone is a, a huge, huge step that, that took us a little bit to get here. And um, I think that that made us that much better last year, and we're, we're only going to get better at it this year. And that it's done so quickly, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our show. I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. I'd like to thank all of our listeners around the district, around the country, and around the world for tuning in. We have launched a district Instagram page. We also have our Facebook page up and running again. Uh, if you have a story, idea, a photo op, or an event you'd like us to promote, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening to MPS Connections, and we'll catch you again in two weeks. Do you have an idea for a podcast? Email us at communications at midlandps.org.